Recently I worked together with a Moogie Franken on a five axis project on a Herco SRT swivel head B axis machine. Now, in doing this, we were using the Amugi Alucut line of materials since we were cutting aluminum. Amugi is typically known for their hard milling capabilities, but they have a great aluminum line as well. And we were able to really efficiently rough this part. Now, speaking of roughing and having that five axis machine, we're actually able to rough some features out in full simultaneous five axis. Now, typically when we're talking about multi-axis, we're usually talking about a surface finishing operation where we're trying to bring that part to a nice surface finish. You're not usually using it for roughing as it's not typically as good on the end mills because you're underloading them or overloading them in other situations. However, with the right feature and the right part, multi-axis roughing can really make a big difference. So let's look at the radar mount here and see what I did. So as I was discussing, typically a multi-axis toolpath would be surface finishing. So here you can see we're doing this outer surface and I'm actually using an Amugi circle segment tool here. And this is using Mastercam's accelerated finishing technology to get a really good finish on this part with a big step over. Now another example of this would be along this side here using a taper form. So if we look at this toolpath, I'll snap to this area right here. You can see I've got a taper form and I'm finishing this outer wall. Again, big step over. The surface finish here was really high quality. But again, these are all finishing operations. When we talk about roughing, we typically wanna do that in a three plus two scenario where we've got two of the rotary axes locked and we're roughing, keeps things rigid. There are a lot of pockets and scenarios that will allow you to efficiently use simultaneous five axis. Let's look at this pocketing toolpath I have here. So this pocket has a floor in it, this one's open. Both of these are great scenarios for using pocketing. I'm gonna back plot this real quick and you'll see it's very similar to OptiRough in that it helixes down to depth, allows us to do that small step over with a large step down and really efficiently remove that material without overloading or underloading the tool. The difference here is you can see how that tool axis control really shifts as we move through the part, right? So those rotary axes are live the entire time. And this machine was very unique because it's a B axis head with a C axis on the table. Again, if we look at this open pocket on the backside, very similar, right? As we come down, we've got that dynamic style tool path, but in full simultaneous five axis. Really a powerful feature here. So then the big question is, how do I program this, right? Because it's, it's a very different mentality than you would use with OptiRough. With OptiRough, you're picking a plane and you're basically doing a three axis toolpath. Here, those rotary axis are live. So there's a little different mentality, a few tricks in how to do this. And the way that I would typically start with this is to create a stock, what I'll call a plug, a stock plug that I want to remove from the part. And the best way to do this is with model prep. So if I come up here to model prep and I use modify feature, I can go through and pick these individual faces, but it's a lot easier to just go in here and double click. Mastercam is extremely intuitive about what a feature is and what I'd like to pick. Now, it's not always gonna work, but in this case, it works perfectly. So this put this on the active level and I actually want to put this on level 9999. So I'm gonna pick it, move it over to that level And now, once that's done, I can really isolate that component. And that is the stock that we want to remove. So go up to tool paths, multi-axis, under the multi-axis gallery, I'm going to pick pocketing. I'm going to use this 12 millimeter bullnose end mill here. And like I said, stock is very important here. So I'm going to pick user selected geometry. A double click will allow me to pick that plug. Now for cut pattern, pocketing has a lot of different algorithms here, right? We can finish the floor, we can finish the walls, but in this case, I'm gonna to stick to roughing. I'm gonna leave zero on the floor and 10 thousandths on the wall. I'll come back in with a swarf later and finish those walls. So in this case, I'm just going to double click on that bottom face and that'll select all the components of that pocket. End selection. Floor geometries are gonna be defined by that bottom floor. That's a pretty obvious choice. Now, what I do want to point out here 
you know, the, the step over, step down, all that stuff's pretty self-explanatory. It's gonna work in a very similar fashion to OptiRough. So tool axis control strategy is definitely a little different here, right? With a three axis OptiRough, we pick a plane, we rough from that plane. With a simultaneous multi-axis operation, we can use a bunch of different strategies, right? From a point to a point, from a chain, you could use surface with tilt, things of that nature. But here we don't have that option. It's all based off the floor surface. We'll get to that in a minute. For now, I'm gonna let this generate. You can see we've got a very similar tool path to what I back plotted before, right? So what if that tool axis control isn't exactly what I intended or it's not getting to the areas I need it to and I need to adjust that? As I said, everything comes from that floor surface. So what we can do here is go up to surfaces, surface from solid, I'll pick this bottom surface and create a surface there, right? Now I put that on 9999, if I shut off these part components, I've got that surface under there, right? So if I use that as my floor surface, I would get a very similar tool path to what I have here. However, I could go in and use something like edit surface, grab a point on this surface and change the normals of this surface, right? So if I do something like this, and I'm changing the way that that surface flows. And now I go back in here, I'm gonna copy this down and reselect that floor surface as this. Keep in mind, this is where your tool axis control is coming from. Okay, now that that's generated, let's take a look with backplot. Now, if you'll remember, the tool axis control on that last strategy really stayed nice and stable, right? There wasn't a lot of wiggle room, it stayed parallel to this floor here, the floor of the bottom of that stock or the floor of the pocket. Well, now I've got a lot more, for lack of a better term, wiggling throughout the pocket. And you can see as it comes around that area, see that big dip there? That's because this floor surface has that dip. The tool is staying normal to that surface throughout the cut. In this case, you know, this is not a perfect example, I just really wanted to show you how that floor surface manipulates the tool path and the tool axis control. Once you grasp the concepts of that stock plug or that stock you wanna remove from a pocket, and then you understand that that floor surface is what is driving the tool axis control, you really can create very efficient, simultaneous five axis tool path.